I am taking a look at Ubuntu GNOME 1704. This is what will become of Ubuntu in the future. Well, next year it will pretty much look like this with the GNOME 3 desktop. I have to say the look and feel will be quite a startling difference between the Unity desktop. The clicking on activities brings up your favourite applications, the application launcher, currently open applications, and then on the right hand side is multiple desktops, which they call activities. You can drag and drop applications onto different desktops. It's weird that it's not showing up straight away, but I wonder if it's because I had the application minimised. That could well be the reason. Looking at the application launcher, it does share some similarities with Unity. The presentation of it here is very similar. However, the usage is not so similar. For example, trying to find files takes a bit more effort. Okay, well after three letters it has picked up the file name, uh, what's that, five down the list? And prior to that we have, well I suppose that would be resolution, so if I was to type another letter, yep, displays is gone. Okay, now we're second in the list after four letters, but I think under Unity that would have come up a little bit quicker. You'll notice the application launcher also displays applications you might like to install. Looking back at the main desktop, if you click on the time, you get the media player controls, the song that is currently playing, calendar and weather. And then on the right hand side we have a combined menu for sound, network connection, location, user, the shutdown, lock and settings. What you'll find is absent is the suspend button. So to get that, you have to go back into the menu, hold down alt, and you'll see the button turns to a pause button. That annoys me. It is not like there is a shortage of space that they were completely unable to put a suspend button here. And why are the words printed out? Can we not have symbols and words? Another difference you'll notice compared to Unity is how much space is used up on the screen just running the applications. It is very bulky, and by default the minimise and maximise buttons are disabled. All you get is a close button. I just cannot stand that behaviour so I had to re-implement it which is very easy to do for the tweak tool, and that is one point I will have to praise them on, at least they have included the tweak tool on their desktop. Yeah, there you go, under Windows you have the title bar buttons, so you can turn on Maximize and Minimize very easily. And you also have the option here for doing high definition window scaling. Excellent, okay, I'm happy with that. Another part that annoys me, perhaps I'm getting too many negative points here, but we'll try and mix up some of the negative and positive. The applications don't seem to know whether they want local or global menus. In Unity it was very straightforward, you either had a global menu or a local menu. In some applications you have buttons in the window bar. This is more for the GNOME specific applications, but you also have menus at the top there. And that is dependent on the application which menu you get. I feel that is a messy way of working. It reminds me of Windows where applications are left to do what they want. And in LibreOffice we have local menus. <laughs> Performance seems reasonable enough. Uh, one other improvement I think this time around is the rendering of Qt applications. It used to be very bad under Ubuntu GNOME. I know there was settings that could be changed in GNOME so they looked a lot better. This isn't perfect, but it is better than it has been. It's disappointing that Qt applications don't look as good in GNOME compared to GTK applications under KDE Plasma. Stability on Ubuntu GNOME doesn't appear to be particularly good. I get a crash every time I boot up the system, and my previous boot up completely failed. I actually had to reboot it multiple times before it finally lumbered into life. So for installing applications, this is exactly the same as Ubuntu, you have the GNOME Software Center. It is held back a couple of versions compared to the GNOME desktop. The desktop itself is at version 3.24, whereas Nautilus software and terminal are held back. This is probably because some of the patches that Canonical have implemented. There is a new night light which you can enable, and it's supposed to make the screen colour warmer and help prevent eye strain and sleepiness. So I was mucking around with it, setting it at a different time. You can do manual or sunset to sunrise, so it's supposed to be colder during the day and warmer at night and I noticed absolutely no difference. I even put up a colour wheel on the screen just to see if any colours were different. In my case it didn't make any difference, I don't know, maybe it'll be different for you. The calendar now has a new week view on it, and I believe there was something about dragging and dropping appointments between different days. 
In terms of applications pre-installed on a system, it is exactly the same as Ubuntu, with a partial suite of LibreOffice, Firefox for the web browser, Rivenbox for the audio player and Totem for the video player. I was mucking around and installed VLC and Inkscape as part of my testing. There's enough basic applications on the system to get you going, so you can use it out of the box. In conclusion, I am surprised about the stability on boot up of Ubuntu GNOME. The issue seems to be with Plymouth, and that issue does not seem to be replicated in Ubuntu or any other derivative of Ubuntu. Once up and running, I have not really found any further issues. The speed and responsiveness seem to be pretty good. I think for any long-term Unity users, GNOME could represent quite a change. In some ways it is more customizable than Unity, in particular with adding extensions. On the other hand, it is more rigid, for example the bar on the top of the screen, that is stuck there. At least with the Unity launcher, you could move it from the left-hand side to the bottom of the screen. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.